Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine. Welcome to another edition of How To. On this edition, we're gonna take a look at a test that you can perform on every single car that comes into your shop. It's a very easy test to perform and it's a very valuable test for your customer. And it will also help you get more custom to your scope a lot faster. What kind of test am I talking about? You'll have to stick around and watch. That's coming up next. You know, one of the things that I hear from a lot of technicians is a uh, reason why they don't use their scopes as much as they know they should is that it's time consuming to get the scope set up and ready to take a measurement with. And I kind of understand that, especially if you own a PC based scope, you have to get the laptop out, you have to start that up, you've got to break out the scope kit, you've got to connect the module, you've got to get the leads out that you want. And I, I understand that, but I'm going to counter that by saying this, you know, when you go in the shop every morning, you got to turn on the lights, right? You got to turn on the shop computer systems, right? You got to turn on the compressor, right? There's a whole list of things that you do in the morning to get your shop up and running and ready for the day. Just add that to this list. Get your scope set up and running at the start of every day, and then it will be ready for you when you need it. And to help encourage that, I'm going to show you how to do a test today that you can do on every single car that comes into your shop. It's a valuable service for your customer, and it provides you with time to get familiar with your, your scope, uh, play around with the time and voltage settings, the triggers, so that you can get more comfortable with those basic settings and uh, really do a service for your customer at the same time. The test I'm talking about is a simple battery charging system test. And we're going to use the same leads that we used la from last time from performing the relative compression test. I'm going to leave the high amp current clamp right where it is, um, but for this test I want to make sure that number one, that I have it zeroed, and number two, I want to make sure it's around all the cables, whether I've chosen the positive or negative side, so that I can get an accurate current measurement. Uh, now the second channel, if you recall last time, we had deployed for a reference waveform, and uh, we had uh, one lead grounded at the battery, but the positive lead was actually attached to the ignition primary side with an attenuator, at least for this scope, in line. So I'm going to make sure I put the attenuator away, I don't need that, and I'm just going to move that positive lead to the positive side of the battery, just like as if I were taking a voltage measure, measurement with my voltmeter. Um, I've also already made a change in the time base, uh, because the engine is going to run in this test, which means it's going to spin faster than it does when it's just cranking. So I've cranked this up to half a second per division, uh, 500 milliseconds per division. Of course, that gives me a five second sweep across the screen. Uh, let's get rid of that little battery warning light real quick. We're getting low on that. So before the battery dies on the laptop, let's go ahead and get this capture. Everything else is the same. It's still set up as a single capture um, using that current flow. So we'll hit that running. Uh, where's my cursor? There you are. It's a little hard to see that cursor on the side. Bear with me. Okay. Got that running. And now we just go ahead and hit the key and we'll get our pattern. All right, so now that we have our capture, let's take a look at what it means. Okay, so let's go over the capture that we just got off our test vehicle. Now again, this is something you can do on every single car that comes into your shop, and it provides some very worthwhile information for your customer. So as you can see, we've got uh, the two channels that we, same ones that we used when we did the relative compression test. Uh, the high current amp clamp is still on channel A, and uh, still set up the same way it was for that test. In fact, you can see in the beginning stages of that pattern, it looks exactly like the relative compression test, doesn't it? Uh, channel B, now that was connected to uh, number one, the primary ignition uh, for the reference signal we needed on that relative compression test. And all I've done is move that one positive lead to join its mate up at the battery, just like I'm hooking up my voltmeter to get a voltage measurement. So that's what we see here on channel B or the red trace, that's the voltage that we see. So I tell you what, it's easier to take a look at the two uh, for, for informational purposes independently than to try to look at them both on the same screen. So let me go ahead and start with voltage. I'm just gonna use the uh, features of this scope to take channel A out of the picture for the time being. 
and that leaves us with voltage. And we can also use these features here to zoom up a bit. So let's do that. So we can see that a little better. And we'll minimize the little box there. And now I'm also going to set out some measurement cursors, which again, nearly every scope I've ever messed with has that feature. I'm going to set one at the beginning of the trace and then one at the lower uh, most point here for the time being. And we'll start there. So let's take at what we're doing here. Now, remember we set the trigger to be about 10% into the screen, so uh, uh, 500 milliseconds into the screen. But the scope is still looking at what it's attached to on this particular model, this particular uh, platform. So it's actually giving me a voltage reading up to that point, which is kind of nice, because what am I measuring before I went in and turned the key on? Open circuit voltage, right? And that's a measure of uh, how healthy the battery is and whether or not I can proceed with any type of charging system test, right? So we'll take a look at that. We're reading 12.76 volts on the, on the cursor. Um, 12.60, of course, is, is good. Maybe a little slight tr uh, surface charge on this battery, but uh, we've got 12.76, so I know I'm okay there. I can go ahead and, and look at the rest of the test. Now, this little peak here, well, what happens when I crank that starter? Again, there's every bit of load that's gonna be applied to that battery is gonna happen when I try to start the engine. And because this scope is sampling so quickly, taking so many samples at such a high speed, uh, for example, I've got uh, close to two million samples on this one screen, I'm able to catch some things that your voltmeter is never gonna catch. Now, this is battery loaded, loaded voltage, just like you would see on any other uh, charging system test you're performing now, but one important difference. We call this inrush voltage. And what I mean by that is you can see it occurs for only a split second. And, and it's happening very, very quickly. And again, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because I've got the inertia of the starter that I've got to get moving. And the starter is working against the inertia of all the engine components that it's trying to get moving. So for that one microsecond, it is drawing a tremendous amount of current and causing a tremendous voltage drop to get all that happening. And we refer to that again as inrush voltage, not quite the battery loaded voltage figure that you're used to seeing from your uh, uh, automotive shop days. Um, here, we're measuring 8.89 volts. Now, if you applied your old battery loaded voltage uh, education of that, you'd say, well, that's below 9.5, Pete, that battery is no good. Again, very uh, cautionary here, that's not the case because we're looking at it at such a fast speed, that inrush voltage at such a fast speed that it's going to be lower. We expect it to be lower. Here, I'd say 8.5 would be your threshold value. If I saw anything less than 8.5, then I would uh, question the integrity of that battery. And when we go back to looking at both patterns together, I'll explain that a little bit more. Now you see that uh, here is where we're starting to see the uh, engine spinning. It's, we're cranking, it has not started yet. Notice how the pattern is wavy, just like we saw in the current. So anytime the current load increases, that voltage drop is more, pulling more voltage out of the battery, right? So you're seeing the same thing mirrored here as we did in the relative compression test or, and in the current pattern. Okay, here comes the point now where we've actually started the vehicle and we're still a little shy of where we started with our open circuit voltage. So now we're putting that energy that we took out of the battery back in we cross the threshold here at about two and a half seconds after startup. And now we're starting to get positive. We're building up our charging voltage. So I can move that one cursor and we'll take a look at charging voltage. That's measuring 13.74. Is that an acceptable number for charging system voltage? Be careful, yes. The norm we consider 13 and a half to 14 and a half, but there are some vehicles out there uh, whose battery management programming will actually pump that figure up as high as 17 volts on some models. That's normal for that model. So before you condemn the charging system for being too high, make sure that you take a look at that. Uh, look that up in the service information system, see what it's supposed to be, okay? So that's the voltage side. Let's go ahead and get rid of that now and go to the current side. And I want 
zoom that back into normal view. There we go. Okay, so here's our current pattern. And you can notice a few things here. As I'm clicking the key through, you can see a few little spikes there. Not too worried about that. But you can keep in mind that when you're using your high current clamp oriented the way the clamp tells you to, you're going to see it draw as an upward reading on your scope screen. All right, and anything as a plus, anything going back into the battery as a minus, uh, or showing up on the z uh, minus side of the zero line for your current. So everything here is a draw. Everything here is a pull out of that, of that battery, okay? So when we first turn the key on, we start to see a uh, current draw. Of course, that's the modules waking up and everything getting energized. Then there's a small hump right here where we can see that's when the starter relay contacts actually closed. And then again, you see that huge spike. In fact, it's off the screen. It's over 600 amps on this particular vehicle. Just like we saw on the voltage side, though, don't let this alarm you. This is not starter current draw. This is inrush current. It's that microsecond amount of energy required to overcome all that mass, like we talked about just a few minutes ago, and get everything rolling. So that is not unusual to see, that high current spike. So don't let that freak you out. Uh, again, then we continue on. Like I said, this is what we saw in the relative compression pattern. The engine is cranking but has not started. It then engages and starts. And let's see if we can put a zero line here. We'll just use one of the cursors to put a zero line for the current. It's going to be right about there. And you can see, just like you saw in the voltage pattern, uh, we're pulling the current out still. But then we start making up for that lost ground and we start putting the current back in. And now, as we cross the line here, right about two and a quarter seconds after startup, two seconds after startup, now we're starting to show a net amount of current. What do I mean by net amount? Well, again, our high current clamp is wrapped around all the cables, so it's not measuring just what's going out or just what's coming in. It's giving us the combined total. Uh, it's the net that's coming in. So at this point, we're showing a net amount of current. Let's move our cursor down so we can get a measurement on that. As it stabilizes, and right about at this point, we're reading about 34 amps going in. Now, that's after a few seconds after startup, and again, that's not an unusual number. Um, we got to put back in the battery what we took out. The gauge here that we want to look at is how long does it take to put that energy back in? We want to let this run and after a few minutes, three, four minutes tops, we should see that nominal amount, net amount going back in, settle out to somewhere around five or 10 amps. Uh, there are different specs out there. I'm going to list some resources for you here in the description for this video for more detail on this. But the point I want to make here is, is if we continue to see this high in that amount, these 30 plus amps, that's too much. What that can cause is the alternator to overheat and eventually fail. So if you've got a car that keeps coming in that is uh, taking uh, alternators or eating alternators for lunch, this is one thing you want to look at. Now what can cause this? A sulfated cell in the battery, a bad battery. And that battery can pass all the other tests that we've seen so far and still be no good. And this is one way you can find that out. And one of the few ways that you'll find that out is to use your scope to test that system. You know, the only way you're gonna get comfortable with your scope is to use it all the time. And the easiest way to do that is to get in the shop in the morning, get your scope set up, ready for use, and then perform tests, just like the one I showed you today, on every single car that comes into the shop. Do that battery charging system test, and then while you're at it, if it's easy to grab, Get a camshaft position sensor, check a mass sensor, pick anything you want on the vehicle and just grab a quick capture, play with those time voltage settings, play with those trigger settings, do that every single day and you're going to find out that you'll become very comfortable with your scope very quickly. So until next time, this is Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine, thanks for watching.